Some of the nation's best educators visit students in Vancouver classrooms. I could really tell that they had learned. How teachers here are influencing teachers from across the nation. Plus, I thought it was really cool. Aspiring chefs get a once in a lifetime experience. Why they were cooking in the Seattle Seahawks kitchen. And the arts are alive in Vancouver Public Schools. How these students are getting an extra chance to strut their stuff on the dance floor. Hello and welcome to In The Know, I'm Colleen Jamison. Vancouver Public Schools is leading the way when it comes to technology in the classroom. In May, educators from across the country flocked to Vancouver to get an up-close look. We Learn correspondent Mark Ray explains why Vancouver was selected and shows us some of the innovative teaching and learning that these educators witnessed. The NSBA, or National School Boards Association, selected Vancouver, Washington as a site visit for visitors from around the United States and Canada. The focus of the site visit was technology and how students and teachers are using technology to transform the classroom. More than 100 people cram into the Bates Center, eager to begin their tours of Vancouver Public Schools. Once they learn more about the district, they're on to buses and off to their first destination. So, well, we're hoping to learn you know, quite a bit about the whole um, shift in the culture of the district and the partnerships with the community to be able to create the vision for our entire community about um, re increasing our technology uh, availability for all of our students because we want to prepare for the future, not for yesterday. Nothing says more about the future than Vancouver's newest school, iTech Preparatory. Visitors see the school's project-based learning in action, including this 3D rendering application with motion-sensitive controls. The student demonstrating it, just a freshman, is working as a developer for the software company that created this program. I write C++ and I'm able to design apps. Currently I'm just working on a mouse emulator so I can move my hand up to the screen and uh, my mouse will follow my finger so I could click an icon and drag it somewhere, move windows around. I was really impressed by how students are taking technology that is not even in the public domain yet and they're able to create and develop and um, just think at a, at a much higher level than we can give them in a traditional classroom. The NSBA event was two days long, giving visitors time to check out several schools like King and Hauk Elementaries to see how technology can improve learning for students of all ages. At Hauk, students prepare for standardized testing with iPods. Uh, so it was good to see that kind of engagement in, in what could be a pretty boring activity. Other destinations included Skyview High School, Vancouver School of Arts and Academics, and Discovery and McLaughlin Middle Schools. Visiting educators seemed to like what they saw. I think what I noticed would, is that the district uh, is not scared to take risks. They're putting gadgets in the hands of kids and teachers and uh, hoping that the outcome will be uh, desirable. And what I've been hearing is that that risk is paying off. Thanks to sponsorships and local businesses, the NSBA site visit was financially self-supporting. Vancouver Public Schools made history with this event. This is the first time that a school district has been selected three separate times for an NSBA site visit. For In The Know, I'm Mark Ray. You can see more of Mark's We Learn reports on our YouTube page. Go to youtube.com slash vansdtv. Just click on the We Learn playlist and access more than three dozen stories of technology in the classroom. Two Vancouver high schools score high in national rankings. In its annual report, the magazine US News gave Vancouver School of Arts and Academics a gold medal and Columbia River High School a silver medal. US News evaluated more than 21,000 public high schools from across the nation on a variety of factors. VSAA finished 10th in the state and 357th in the nation. 
River was ranked 40th in the state and number 1,390 in the country. High school seniors raised more than $100,000 for charity. Students at Columbia River, Skyview, and Hudson's Bay High Schools each held their annual senior pageants. Proceeds from River and Bay's events went to Dornbecker Children's Hospital. Skyview's pageant benefited the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Students sang, danced, and spoke to the crowd. The biggest fundraisers took home the crown. The district's talk show, Snapshot, has a lot more on these pageants in its latest episode. Host Elena Buller meets some of the contestants and student organizers. She also has the winner of Skyview's pageant, whose personal story is pretty incredible. You can see Snapshot on Comcast Channel 28 as well as on our YouTube channel. Nothing is more important for your health than your heart, and oftentimes you don't even know anything is wrong until it's too late. Thanks to community partnerships, two local high schools host heart screening fairs to prevent tragedy from striking. Nick Vole has the story. Are you checking in? Mm -hmm. Okay. The gym at Fort Vancouver High School is filled with medical professionals and volunteers methodically screening students for heart abnormalities. Joshua. Joshua, my name is Bob. If you could slip this left arm out for me, please. Joshua, a freshman, is like most teenagers. It's hard for him to imagine heart problems at such a young age. That was also the case for Kayla Burt, who was a star athlete at the University of Washington. Out of nowhere, uh, I told my friend one night on actually New Year's Eve, so I told my friend that I felt lightheaded, and next thing she knew I collapsed, and uh, my teammates fortunately were there, and they all played a part in basically keeping me alive. Kayla now works for the Hope Heart Institute, one of several nonprofits and businesses that came together to put on this screening. We hope these things are prevented by screening these kids' hearts and making sure that they're okay for athletic participation and just overall health. Another nonprofit was founded by the Driscoll family after the untimely death of their son Quinn, a Vancouver teenager. Through tragedies, uh, we want to reach out and make sure families don't go through what we go through. Screenings like this one at Fort and Hudson's Bay High Schools are about catching problems early and raising awareness. We lose anywhere between four and 7,000 kids a year in this country to sudden cardiac arrest. If you put it in perspective, that's a child uh, one every three days in a public school in this country dies from sudden cardiac arrest. Fort and Bay are higher needs schools, meaning the children here have less access to health care than at other schools. And that's one of the reasons that they're doing the screenings here, to bring the care right to the kids' doorsteps. Okay, go ahead and relax. And if you do it one more time. Meanwhile, Joshua goes from station to station. Doctors listen to his heartbeat. They attach electric monitors all over his body to read data about his circulatory system. They also ask him questions about his medical history. Do you yourself get any problems with chest pain, passing out when you, when you work out? He even gets the equivalent of an ultrasound to show his heart in action in real time. And in the end, Joshua checks out just fine, <laughs> which is the news everyone hopes to hear for every child. As a family and as a group of people that got together as a foundation, we said if we helped one family or one child, it would all be worth it. For In the Know, I'm Nick Vol. For more information on how you can set up a free screening for your child, go to the Quinn Driscoll Foundation's website. The web address is quindriscollfoundation.org. As part of the heart event, Fort Vancouver's culinary art students prepared a healthy meal for families who came in to be screened, and they had a little help when it came to planning the menu. As the practice facility for the Seattle Seahawks, the Virginia Mason Athletic Center in Renton, Washington is most associated with footballs, but on this day, it's all about meatballs. Culinary art students from Fort Vancouver High School traveled all the way up I-5 to meet with Seahawks executive chef Mac McNabb. He showed them how to make his special turkey meatballs, which they brought home to serve to guests at a special event. But the visit was about more than the perfect meatball. It was a chance for students to get a glimpse into a working kitchen. I thought it was really cool. Um, I've never seen something like this. and. Um, I think it sounds like it's such a cool job that he has, being able to cook for a whole football team. And it sounds like it's a huge load of work to do. I hope that the, the students learned about another type of job you can have in food service. They've learned there's a lot of diversity in the job market. And this is just one more opportunity that they can pursue. Many of the students in the culinary arts program hope to become chefs someday. 
I love cooking for people and making them happy, and it makes me feel good as a person. And I like knowing that I, like, I'm doing something for, for me and for other people instead of not knowing what I want to do. And I'm glad I found it while I was young so I don't have to venture on to something else that I know I don't want to do. And the lesson they learned from Chef McNabb? It's a lot of hard work <laughs> to be able to do it, and uh, the perks are really nice, but you know, you gotta, it takes a lot of work and a lot of years to be able to do something like this. Students headed back to Vancouver, inspired to get back into the kitchen. Yeah, it makes me want to see what's out there. Like, there's more than just one option. Uh, you can do catering, you can do stuff like this. I thought it was a really cool experience. The students and staff also got to eat lunch at the Seahawks cafeteria, eating the same lunch that players at spring practices were also eating. Vancouver Public Schools is recognized by the local Rotary Club for its commitment to the arts. VPS offers a full slate of music, dance, and arts programs at the elementary, middle, and high school levels. Art instructors meet regularly to develop strong curriculum for every kind of student. Well, for me, um, I think it is about um, equity and providing opportunities to all students. Um, you know, many families have the opportunity to, to enroll their students in dance studios and private music lessons, and we want to provide opportunities to all kids regardless of their opportunity, um, you know, to pay for them or regardless of their financial means. Several elementary schools have after-school choir programs and others offer music instruction. One of the most popular art forms for kids is dance, and thanks to a grant, dozens of young dancers are getting an extended opportunity to learn. Amanda Richter has our story. In the Dizzy Feet program, students from all over Vancouver give up their free time after school to get moving. We we'll learn all different types of styles. I really like the modern. Other students prefer jazz or hip hop. In hip hop you have to go really fast and so when I go it's hard for me to remember all the steps so I have to remember the beat. Sometimes um, the pace we go, we have to go really fast sometimes. It's challenging but these young dancers are eager to take it on. Uh, the teacher's kind of strict but in a good way. Vancouver School of Arts and Academics teacher Jackie Sachs is the program director. She earned a $10,000 grant from the Dizzy Feet Foundation. It pays for about 80 students, boys and girls ages 8 through 13. The after school classes broaden the students' dance skills beyond what they're already getting in their arts classes at school. I know this is a real creative imaginary kind of age still for them and they haven't necessarily transitioned to a real defined um, aesthetic in dance so the idea that we can keep exposing them with different styles and hopefully help them find something that keeps them interested. It seems to be working. I wasn't so good at dancing and I don't really do it in front of people but I just thought I wanted to do something new. Do you like it? Yeah. Awesome, find a new friend. For In the Know, but I really love dancing. I'm Amanda Richter. The Dizzy Feet program continues through the summer and fall. If you're interested in joining the program, just contact your school's creative movement specialist or dance teacher. The summer session starts in July and the fall session begins in October. Students who prefer other art forms got a chance to display their work at a local business. The modern orthodontists turned their office into an art gallery. It's the largest organized show for the public for middle school students in the district. Dozens of young artists from all of the district's middle schools exhibited. Visitors oohed and awed over painting, sculpture, and other works of original art. This is the second year for this show, and teachers tell us it's now an annual event. Vancouver School of Arts and Academics celebrates its annual Art Week. Students of each art form get one day to show off their work in assemblies. One student's focus is TV news, and she produced a story on the event, which you can see at the end of this episode. Sacagawea's green team earns another honor, this one from the federal government. The elementary school's environmental efforts made it just one of five schools in the state to be named a 2013 U.S. Department of Education Green Ribbon School. Only 64 schools from around the nation earned similar awards. Sacagawea was cited for its installation of a solar panel, its energy tracking and cutting efforts, and implementation of environmental education into its curriculum. 
Making the leap from high school to college is a challenge. Not only are students on their own for the very first time, the academic standards are pretty high too. But as Helen Raptis reports, students in Vancouver have a chance to ease their way into college. So for each question of the survey you answered, Students in advanced placement, or AP classes, expect to work hard. That's what they signed up for. But it isn't until class starts that it really hits them. Uh, I'm getting like a really different experience than I thought it was going to be, but it's, like a, it's a good one. It's a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be, but it's, like it's, it's getting me ready for what's going to happen in the future when I go to college. That's the idea behind AP courses and the district's College in the High School program, a partnership with Clark College. Students can earn real college credit for taking challenging classes in their own school instead of a college campus. Kids who take AP courses tend to also be uh, involved in school and they want to stay on campus because they're in ASB or they're in sports or they're participating in Knowledge Bowl or all the other things that kids do to enrich their high school experience and college in the high schools doesn't interrupt that. The academic advantages are also huge. AP classes are great preparation for what their college classes will be like. Some kids might not have taken the college level, so when the instructor or whatever is telling you what to do, you'll be like, oh, I already know this because I did this in high school, so you'll already be prepared for it. Teachers and students see the results when expectations are higher. They challenge you more and there's a lot of work that's added, but it makes you feel more fulfilled after you do it. It's a really fun experience because students are oftentimes kind of shocked that they can do this. And with the rising costs of college, the program offers significant savings. Some of our students only have to pay $25 to receive college credits, and so when they enter college and have to take a class that's thousands of dollars compared to the class they paid $25 for, they benefit. And every year there are kids who go off to school with some pretty difficult classes already under their belt. And I think they're well prepared, too. For In the Know, I'm Helen Raptus. This year, 75 students district-wide participated in college in the high school program. That's in addition to the Running Start and other college readiness programs offered to students. Students at Sarah J. Anderson Elementary School make a commitment to fitness. A record number of kids turned out for the track team. A whopping 112 athletes are running and jumping after school. The team is so popular, there's only space enough for fourth and fifth graders. I just think it says we have a great program, that the students really value the track program here. They're excited to be on it from a young age. It doesn't matter what grade they are, they're asking about track and wanting to know when they can join it. For students, the draw of track and field is obvious. I mean, I get to skip school longer. I mean, it's not about learning. I get to be with my friends after school. It's exercise, fun. I like, um, I'm really athletic and I like being a part of a team and it's just like really fun and exercising. It's important. And while there are a number of events for kids to compete in, they seem to agree which one's the hardest. Uh, I gotta say the 400 meter because it's one of the longest swims we do here. 400 meter because you have to run the whole track. Several of the students we spoke with told us that their experience with the track team makes them want to compete at the middle and high school levels as they get older. And we're just about out of time. We want to remind you, of course, that past episodes of In the Know are available on our YouTube page. That's youtube.com slash vansdtv. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Colleen Jamison.